Good afternoon, everyone. The Solar Radiation Management Science Conference has been held in Cambridge. This is the 2015 edition in the UK. Such interesting topics as climate engineering using stratospheric sulfate aerosol delivery systems, as well as climate engineering programs ongoing, the current theory, ozone chemistry and stratospheric particle injection to reinvigorate the lost ozone, and the debate rages whether this particulate spraying in our skies is for solar radiation management or for cosmic radiation management, CRM. With the collapse of the primer field around our sun, the solar winds are diminishing, and during this time, as you can see, this is the ozone hole over the northern hemisphere. The loss is nearly two and a half times greater in the northern hemisphere. Let's take a look at the possible scenarios why the stratospheric aerosol geoengineering programs are being discussed. With Cambridge University hosting the Engineering the Climate Summit, it seems that this type of information is slowly and out into the public arena for a purpose. The ideas that they're discussing are stratospheric sulfate aerosols or nanoparticulates of aluminum, barium, and strontium into the atmosphere for a certain effect. I came across an incredible article that shows a different usage for this program other than the albedo effect to try to block out sunlight because of the supposed warming on the planet from CO2. That's a convenient excuse. We're heating the planet. We can fix the problem. This new article, Skyception, talks about the increase in cosmic radiation, which is something entirely different. A look at the ozone concentrations over Antarctica. You notice the Dobson unit measurements are running typically between 2 and 300, 350. But when we jump to the northern hemisphere, A, what's anomalous is the chlorofluorocarbons, the CFCs that were banned in the 1985 treaties, shouldn't be causing this ozone depletion in the northern hemisphere. Look how intense this is. This is more than double to two and a half times what it is in the southern hemisphere. The Dobson units here are pushing around 600 to 700 in some areas over Greenland. And interestingly enough, this is the temperature difference map from 2014, which many people claim is the warmest year on record, but that is to be disputed. What's the interesting part is notice where the highest temperature difference over the northern hemisphere is exactly where the ozone depletion is. So you should be asking, is the ozone depletion causing the warming or is it the actual the CO2? I'm more with the ozone depletion allowing more intense UV, A, B, and C to strike our planet, which would indeed cause warming not CO2, which they've had us trying to buy for the last 25, 30 years. I'll let you slow down the video here and take a look at what is ozone and what's a Dobson unit so you can figure out what exactly the measurement parameters are on that. And if you think this UK conference is something unique and wow, once in a lifetime and they've never talked about solar radiation management before, I encourage you to go to the SRMGI website. This is the Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative. They've been talking about putting nanoparticulates of aluminum into the atmosphere for 15 years now as a mitigating idea against man-made induced warming. A quick look at the UV index across North America. Notice the intensity a little bit south of Florida there. Once you get down toward Cuba, it's around 11 or even above. And a comparative look at this particular UV estimates are measured in joules, not the UV index from 1 to 11. So when we match up right around Cuba, what we see at 11 on this global map, you can see that the joules match up pretty much around 4,500 to 5,000. If 4,500 is 11 on the UV index, when we get down toward the equatorial bands, it's up around 7,000. That would be pushing the UV index to around 18 or 19 down there. A quick jump over to the sunburn map. I notice how everything is 
11 or above. They don't actually increase it and show you the numerical values for the purple areas. Another interesting thing about the UV index in 2004, very high was 10. Now they've generated a new global solar UV index where extremes 11 plus. And here we are across the planet with depleted ozone in both the northern and southern hemispheres. A color coding, this is a standardization across all scientific bodies. Galactic cosmic rays have a different effect on our planet. A decline in the magnetosphere, that's related to a decline in the solar wind as well as a decline in the primer field on our sun those are all interlaced with the decline of the magnetosphere more cosmic rays penetrate our atmosphere and the evidence is there that increased cosmic rays also lead to low cloud formation which in turn lead to heavier rains and more snow across our planet it's not because ice is melting and there's more evaporation into the atmosphere. Think cosmic rays when you think more cloud cover, heavier snow, stronger storms than the global warming carbon dioxide hoax that we've been fed. There's a lot of research on this. I'll start you with Sven's mark. Take a look at his work, The Cloud Mystery. The solar winds are diminishing. This chart shows the solar wind diminishing at a linear rate. It's unknown whether it will increase into an exponential decrease over the next couple of years. David Lapointe is the one doing most research on the primer fields relating the plasma corona in the sun to external power forces with Birkeland currents that do power our sun electrically. These measurements were made by the Ulysses polar orbits around the sun before the Ulysses spacecraft was decommissioned. This particular spacecraft was strictly just measuring the solar wind dynamic pressure, which showed a great decrease in the wind itself, but also showed an increase in giga electron voltage range where the white circle indicates. This also would have an effect on a migrating pole both north and south. This image here shows the polar wander where the actual geomagnetic north pole is currently, how it's been moving over the last few years. This is a quick look at the south pole. One thing does appear to be certain, solar radiation management as a fix to perceived man-made global warming is now being supported by the media. They are looking to the public to support these programs. And the obvious question is the current aerosol disbursement programs that we see in our skies seem to not be effective enough to stop the ozone depletion. So now they're relying, it seems, on the public to accept these programs so they can put the spraying of nanoparticulates and geoengineering into full force right now and scale up, ramp up operations to maximum disbursement with our blessings, not mine. The media is trying to get everybody to accept this by using fear. Take a look at the headlines. Scientists fear runaway global warming, polar ice caps depleting, biodiesel blamed, two degrees global temperature rise. And the last one, engineering climate could be our only hope they're trying to sell us to accept this program because it's at the last back against the wall stop the spraying of nanoparticulate aluminums bariums and strontiums could be a way of deflecting or stopping this incoming radiation solar radiation management is going to be sold but it's actually cosmic radiation mitigation that's the actual true purpose these are what the programs currently look like, solar radiation management. You'll see this across the skies without your consent. Stratospheric aerosol geoengineering is the proper term for it. Please use the scientific term when you talk to somebody about this. Satellite views show it daily. This is what occurs in the skies. It thins out to create a layer of haze blocking something coming in. And as human psyches go, if the governments of the world truly came out and said our magnetosphere is declining because our primer field in the sun is going to usher in a new grand solar minimum and the temperature on our planet is going to drop two to three degrees Celsius affecting agricultural production and only 60% of you are going to live over the next 20 years. Please let us spray the skies to try to reduce the cosmic radiation coming in that you have no effect over. Or they're trying to sell you're putting too much carbon in the atmosphere and if you stop doing that we have a program where we could spray something in the sky with nanoparticulates it's your fault and we can actually fix what you did 
if they actually came out and said the cosmic radiation management was the true purpose of the program, most people would quit working today. Most people would empty their bank accounts. There would be no economy within a week on this planet. People would be running to the stores to buy everything. There would be artificial shortages. There would be a calamity before anything even happened. As we take a look at the different minimums that have occurred over the last 900 years, you can see they come in pretty regular intervals. Looking back in time, this is from a newspaper clipping from 1970. Notice the average temperature change it, from 1880. It increased, but then right around 1945 or so, it just dropped like a rock down to 1970. When many people were talking about the ushering in of a new solar minimum at that time with cooling temperatures, it suddenly spiked in the warming, but now we're on a pause for 18 years, and now it's starting to cool again. An amazing video that explains it far better than I can is Ice Age 2050's Certainty. Please take a look at this. I've included the links below. Along with two ice flows and the link to Skyception so you can read all three chapters detailing what I just spoke about and draw your own conclusion. Rolf Weiss has a long series of 60 to 70 videos that explain what we can do to actually prepare for this with bands of agriculture along the equator out of the soon to be affected 30 degree north zones where we're going to lose crop production. Anyway, I encourage you to do all your research, make your own conclusions. I'm just bringing something forward here for debate. Do your own research and make up your own mind. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something useful out of it. 